Ah, all together, darling people. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kibishanu b'mitzvotav, v'tibanu la'asok shuvi tovah. Ah. Amen. So, I think the first time, the first time I ever uh, led services with the man, who's kind of like in there somewhere. <laughs> um, he was actually standing right behind me singing, saying, sing something, sing something. <laughs> and that kind of has stayed in my mind for the last 32 years. <laughs> there he is, right? <laughs> he stood right behind me and he said, sing something. Oh, and I did. And I have, and we do, <laughs> following, following his prophetic vision. Um, so I want to uh, welcome all of you um, and introduce you to, um, yeah, I think <laughs> the transformational figure in my life who stands behind me and on my shoulders and everywhere around me, um, who um, gave me the gift of this congregation, of this career, of this beautiful, beautiful um, and wondrous connection for um, meaning and purpose and value in my life and I hope in all of our lives too. Um, Good to have you with us. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, I got a big lump on my throat just looking at the faces and uh, <clears throat> looking at the room. I, uh, I wasn't prepared for that. And um, I, I guess I uh, didn't remember how powerful you all are to me. And um, hearing Laurel sing, um, just went way down deep into my soul. And I'm sure it does for you guys too. But uh, one of my dearest and oldest friends lives in Northampton, uh, uh, Eddie, and he's at Merle Feld. And, and Eddie and I have <clears throat> studied together now for 30, 40 years. I moved out to San Francisco and uh, we uh, continue to meet on uh, Arab Shabbos uh, for an hour and we study one text after another. Basically, Eddie translates and I listen, but we call it studying together. And it, it reminded me of uh, how uh, I first met Laurel. Uh, we were gonna spend the summer in Israel uh, with the, on the faculty of the Bromfman program. One of the kids in the program is now the senior rabbi at Central Synagogue in Manhattan. Um, and as uh, we were going to the airport, we got a ride from a past president of the congregation, Allah Shalom, Bill Adelson. And as we were getting in the car, he reaches in the seat behind him, pulls out a manila folder and says, Rabbi, I, I know you don't like to be involved in hiring people. Um, uh, I know you believe that that's something we should do for ourselves. And uh, we're looking everywhere for a high holiday chazan. And uh, we have a short list that's now down to two or three. And there's uh, one woman who we're very interested in. Uh, she's a, a cantor uh, in the making. And she is in Jerusalem with her husband, who's a Jerusalem fellow for Jewish education. And I was hoping that you'd meet her. And this, this is the part of the story that most of you have heard or know of. And I, I called L Laurel when we got settled in our apartment in uh, Talpiot. And uh, Laurel came over and we just had a, a wonderful meeting of, of the minds. Um, and we talked uh, about for about three hours and it really took a, it felt like it was 10, 10 minutes long. And now the famous story, I, I said, I, I, I'd like to invite you to be our cantor. And uh, she said, don't you want to hear me sing? And I said, 
really, I, I, I remember vividly, I said, oh, okay, frankly, I, I, I think I'm hiring your soul. I'm, I'm glad you can sing, but that's not what I was looking for. Um, and I was telling Eddie about this weekend uh, and uh, looking forward to it. And we came a, across a text. Eddie originally found it. I can't take credit for it. And uh, the text that we're going to study today, <clears throat> this morning, comes from uh, the teachings of uh, Rabbi Noah, uh, Noah Brzezowski, the Slonimer Rebbe. And his master teaching comes in five volumes that look like this. And these are what the pages look like. And we're going to study a, a, a highly edited, rearranged version that I thought would be perfect for us uh, to do this morning. The, the title of the teaching, uh, if I had to give it a title, is Moving On. That's with an apostrophe after the moving and on. Um, and uh, it, it is, uh, as you'll see, not a translation. I, I wouldn't even try once if you know any Hebrew, once you get into the Hebrew with me, I, I think you'll discover right away uh, that this stuff is not easily translatable. Uh, it is because I typed all the Hebrew and put in all the dots myself, riddled with errors, you notice I didn't put my name on it in case it should fall into the hands of some real Hebrews. Um, and I, I, I would like to coax you not to read ahead, although it'll probably be difficult. Before I, I, I uh, get to the text, though, I, I, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, with gratitude the presence of uh, my two colleagues, Rabbi Brandel, and I understand Rabbi Thomas may be uh, among us as well. And, yeah, and of course- yeah. He's waving to you right now. <laughs> okay. The text that we're gonna read from is uh, called Nativot Shalom, Paths of Peace. And it's in the section on Lech Lechas, uh, item two. And as I mentioned already, it's written by Shalom Noach Brzozowski of Swan. Uh, this is a neat trick I learned how to do with PDFs. As you can see, he was born in, uh, in Poland and he was Hiktir, that's the Hebrew word, crowned Rebbe in 1981. And he's famous for a doctrine of what he calls emuna pshita, simple faith. And as you'll see, that's deceptive. It's not quite so simple. And uh, even much more important than that, he wouldn't use the word. It is really very sophisticated psychology. He died only in uh, 2000 in, uh, in Jerusalem and is considered uh, by many of the aficionados uh, to be one of the genuinely creative new Hasidic voices since the Holocaust. And uh, again, it's highly edited, and we'll spend a little bit of time on it. He's going he's gonna to mess with three psukim, or three verses. And what you'll see in the English is my loose uh, translation. Matsinu b'Torah. We find in the Torah, shalosh pa'amim, three times, diber Adonai el Abraham, belashon halicha, that Three times God spoke uh, to Abraham in the language of, and this is a key word and a big word. And before I do any more, I want to see if I can set this up. Good, good. All right, I'm back with that. Fine. Um, three occasions when God speaks to Abraham and uses the imagery or the idea of halicha, and that's the theme of the whole thing. And that's what I will translate as moving on. 
Three times in the Torah, uh, God speaks to Abraham about moving on. The first, I, I think you'll know all three, and I won't spend much time on this. God said to Abraham, get going, move on. From your land, from uh, your birthplace, and from your parents' home. El Haaretz Asher Arecha to the land that I will show you. That's that's the first verse that's in play. Uh, and as a kind of a part B to that, uh, Rashi's commentary, which as most of you uh, I'm sure know, is so important that it's usually printed in most editions of uh, of the Chumash. And uh, it becomes sort of part of the text itself. And Rashi says about this verse, the reason you have to leave is for uh, your own good and for your benefit, or for your, for, for your good and for your reward. Oh, and by the way, what I've done is to help those who are uh, still working on their Hebrew, uh, if it's underlined in red, in the margin, you'll find uh, the Hebrew word and a, a brief uh, translation by me. Uh, and the, Rashi's commentary does pose a problem. Uh, several Hasidic masters particularly uh, complain. They say, well, if this was supposed to be a big test about Abraham leaving his home, uh, why would then it be for his own benefit and his reward? What kind of test is that? I mean, I say, um, I see Brendel. Brendel, I want you to go do me a big favor. Go somewhere. It's going to be very, very hard, but don't worry, you'll win the lottery. So if he says yes, we don't know if he's really doing it because I asked him or because he naturally wants to win the lottery. Okay, that's verse, verse one. Second verse, which neither Eddie or I had recognized this, being uh, much in play or used at all, uh, comes from uh, Genesis 17.1. Vayihi Avram ben tishim shana v'teisha shanim. And Abraham was uh, uh, 77 years old. No, no, not 99 years old. That's better. Vayera and appeared Adonai, El Aram, to Abraham, Vayomer Elav, and said to him, Ani El Shaddai, that we usually remember. Now here's the, the key phrase. Hit Halef, God first says to Abraham, Hit Halech Lefanai Vehye Tamim. Walk before me. So there we've got the Halicha again. See the Halach in it. Before me, vehaye and be tamim and be whole, which is a mysterious word. He's going to mess with that in a while too. But so somehow, the next phase is that you should walk before me, uh, and that you got to be whole. And uh, the third verse in Abraham's life is vayomer uh, kachna et bincha. Et Yechidcha, Asher Ahavta, Vet Yitzchak, Vlechlecha. Oh, look at that. Same word. First in Abraham's life, it's Lechlecha, and later in Abraham, it's Lechlecha, but the Lech has as its root Halach walking, moving on. So God says, take your, your son, uh, your only one, the one whom you love, Isaac, and move on to the land of Moriah, which I'm sure all of you know, means that we, uh, um, we're about to enter the Akedah story. Um, I'm not going to stop there. I'm just going to assume those are reminders of things that we can all see and do. <clears throat> okay, now we're into what the Slonimer has to say. And 
beware, it's going to sound kind of simple, but the more you think about it, the more mysterious it becomes. Eno dome adam lo adam. Miyom briat adam vahala. Eno from a no likeness, a person to a person, from the day of, I think the person's create, from the day of that person's creation and onward. So the simple thing is, yeah, I know people are like, I knew that. But he says, would you pay closer attention to that? Uh, I would suggest, would you take a moment, please, and look at somebody else? Don't do it direct. Uh, be circumspect. Uh, maybe just with a side glance, look at another person next to you, across from you, uh, <clears throat> at the kitchen table or wherever. Look at that other person and just let that sink in. You are not like them. No two human beings ever created were like it's a basic principle of Hasidic thought, and of course, all Jewish spirituality. Uh, you could, uh, we could spend the whole morning just talking about that statement, but he goes on. The ein adam echad, and no one person, echad, adam echad, yachol is able. Here's the big word that has become the $64,000 word in American Judaism today, for better or for worse. Litakain as in tikkun olam. Here it means repair, fix, do it right. So no, uh, no one person is able to fix ma what? She'el chavero letakein, what his friend can, or is the key word is, is, is able to fix. Oh, so when I see that person across from me who is different than other than me, the corollary to that statement is, oh yeah, and I can't fix what they can fix. And they can't fix or repair what only I can repair. You can already guess where it's going. Oh, so each person, every human being, not only is different, but has one repair assignment that it is upon them to complete. Hainu, which is to say, lechol adam, for every person, yesh, there is at yudo v'tafkido, a mission and a task. Now it gets a little heavier and you got to take a moment and don't look at the other person, but look at yourself. You have a mission and you have a task. And your mission or your task could take most of your life. It could be that most of your life is just a setup for your mission or your task, but make no mistake, each human being has a task unique to them. That is Allah upon him, it is, whose it is their obligation to repair, oh, it gets even worse, that you have to repair, not even with or by your life, through your life, your purpose in life is to complete your mission or your task, relax, if being a sensitive human being, you want to say, but I don't know what it is, relax. Hardly anybody does until the last moments before uh, 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 they die. Um, Steinzeit says you get that glimpse. It's like a mountaintop. You look back over your life and you realize, oh, my God, that was my, that's what, oh, no. And then you're dead. Uh, so that's the. That, that's the, the basic idea here. There are no two people are alike. Uh, each person has a task that only he or she can, uh, can repair, and that that's, that's the purpose of why you have a life. Um, 
that's heavy duty the theology and also psychology. Uh, try this amazing test at home, boys and girls. Try to sit down and think about what is your life mission and your task. I don't mean the task of completing the income tax. I don't mean the task of getting the kids to school. I don't mean the mission of even trying to have a good marriage or uh, trying to raise children. None of it, you don't know what it is, but somehow the purpose of your life is to figure out that task and to complete it. Hakadosh Baruch Hu and the Holy One of Blessing, Ma'amid, literally stands up or sets up or arranges lecholachad for every person. It's called all the nesibot v'hatanayim. All the, the necessary uh, circumstances and conditions whereby Sheyahol, he, she would be able, Al Yadam, through their hand, Litakein et Asher. He would be able, she would be able to repair the task that is set before him to complete. So not only do you have a unique task and a unique mission. God gives you everything you need to do it. I think that's just thrilling. I kind of get goosebumps when I say it. Not necessarily happy stuff, not necessarily things that come gift wrapped, not necessarily things you particularly like, not the way you would run your life, but God says, yeah, you're getting this. And the reason, the reason you're getting this is because you'll need this to finish your life task. And in 20 years, when you're out of jail, you'll understand why. God knows, only God knows. Will, uh, will mal out and to fulfill Yehudo, his mission, Vatafkido, Baolamo in his world. It gets real redundant. That's why I had to do a lot of editing. And I'm not going to stop after every one of these paragraphs. It would take us till, till next Shavuos to do it, but I'll open the mics just for a couple brief comments or questions. Jim, um, I'll repeat. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, the idea is that you have a that. Are you... Um, you know that you fall through it and when you die. Uh, it's this sense that if somebody dies earlier than we expect is normal, like a child or whatever, and we assume they fall through their death. So the question is, if someone dies at a, a time before a, the fulfillment of a life, as we might have expected, like if a child sure. dies, forbid, have they had a chance to fulfill their task? Do we say they've, they've done what they were yeah. supposed to do? Great, great, great question. Uh, I wouldn't dare say this rabbinically. But uh, there is a famous story about Luria, about uh, an infant who died. And um, Luria is alleged to have said at the funeral, this child had to come into the world for its parents to hold him. And it accomplished its task. And that was the end of the sermon, uh, the eulogy. Uh, we're talking about a different kind of way of looking at what goes on in the world. Yeah. Uh, God doesn't seem to run the way the, the world the way I think it should be run. I don't know about you, but I could come up with a long list of things that I'd like to tell the Rabbi Nishalayim, look, I think you screwed up here. This is no good. That's no good. This kind of teaching is saying, yeah, well, you're not running the world. What your job is is to complete your life task. And when we see something this, that happens to us, what we should be thinking is, did God send this horrible event to me to help me fulfill my life task? That would be the way I think he would parse it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bernie. Hi, Bernie. Hi, hi, Larry. I, I was just thinking about the other thing that, that asks why was uh, the original Adam created by himself? Um, cause each person is a universe and to kill one person is to destroy the universe. It's like killing, it's like destroying the world and to save one life is like saving the world. It seems quite connected 
his teaching is connected with that one, I think, isn't it? I, I, I don't have any trouble with that. I think that's a, a wise insight. Yeah, I like it very much. As usual, thank you, Bernie. <laughs> Rabbi, you want another? All right, let's go. Go on. Let's, all right, let's go on. Let, let's do another paragraph. There's six pages in this, guys. <laughs> Settle in, my friend. Lazachayav Kalim. This is actually going to respond nicely to uh, what we spoke about just a moment ago. Ul Sheni Hachayim Kashim Yoter. For this one, for one person, Chayav Kalim, his life is easy. Everything he or she touches, it just turns to magic. It's beautiful. Everything works out, not a bit of source, nothing. Uh, Vashini, and for another one, life is just very, very hard. Everything they touch falls apart. It's one agony after another. L'chol Adam et yichudo shel mahalach chayav. He said, for every person, uh, the path of his life is unique. No, we knew that, but he's just asking us to pay a little closer attention to that. Um, our, our life paths are unique. She'ein lishvuto l'mahalach ha'chayehem shel acherim. There is no a likeness of one life path to another. No two, some, some are hard, some are easy, and so forth. V'hu kevan shalechol adam, yesh tafkido v'hamiyuchad elav notnim lo kol hatanaim v'hamatniim b'chdei sheyuchal noloto. Um, and for every person, there is a unique task that is upon him, and that not only that, but what is given to him, to this person with a unique life task, that is you, are what is given him are all the, uh, the conditions and uh, all the appropriate conditions in order to fulfill what the, uh, that he would be able to fulfill. So don't come to me, he says, and say, oh, well, I could do my life task. I know what it is, but I need money. I could fulfill my life task. If I, oh, if I have a little bit of talent, I could do it. And what he says, punch in the nose, relax. You have already and will be given every single appropriate thing you need to complete your life task which I find to be thrilling. Um, um, one more. V'af ha-matzavim ha-kashim b'chaye adam and uh, for the difficult situations of the life of a person, heim gam kein em sa'im Shanit, no. Uh, wait a minute. We have to stop everything here for a minute because an alarm clock has gone off, and you can't hear it. I hope you can't hear it, but I'm going to try to. That's better. Now I lost my place. Okay. Uh, uh, and even for the difficult situations in life, a person uh, also has the the means are given to him in order that she yagia, that he would uh, attain, come to Tikono, its repair. So not only do you have the, the means, but you are given the situations, even though you don't particularly like it. It's set before you so you can complete your life task. And now he gives us the real big, uh, Pit gum, copy it, put it on the refrigerator, even though it'll make you nuts. She'ein ra min hashamayim, because this is simple faith. 
There is no evil that comes from heaven. Whatever comes before, he doesn't admit of that possibility. For him, it's all about your life task and completing your life task and shut up and quit quetching already. You've been given what you need. Yesh nolad im midot utchunot tovot. There are, uh, we are born with, with uh, good qualities. Vayesh hasoveil mat viyut, mat viyot should be, umidot uh, reot. And there are those who must bear uh, natural characteristics that are bad. Well, if God gave me the fly task, he wants me to do this and be this way, then how come I always lose my temper? Which he would say, schmuck, that's part of your job that's been given to you too. You need to have that temper to complete your life task. It is part of you. You don't get to say, oh, I only want the good stuff and then I'll do what God wants and I'll be a good girl, I'll be a good boy. Now, gua bakaas, some are afflicted bakaas with anger. Oba ta'ava, or with a craving, vaga'ava, or with arrogance, and stuff like that. So you can make a list of all the things that you have that you wish you didn't have, or places that you wind up that you don't want to wind up, or things that you seem to have been dealt that you didn't want to have dealt to you, and realize that they are also part, a necessary part, of you completing your life task. I'm going to do one more and then we'll go to the mics. Until Lifamim comes, sometimes it happens. God forbid. One complains, begins to quetch about how, the way God is running the world. I don't like the way God, it, it happens, he says to people with him, that God has set up for him kashim ke'ilu, such difficult tests as these. If God's got a task for me, why are these difficult things in front of me? And he wants to say to make it crystal clear that overcoming that Working with that is part of your life task. So stop fighting it that way and fight it as part of your life's mission. She'eno misugal la'amod bahem. Because one is able, uh, uh, is unable to withstand them. One is unable to endure them. Achanet, because indeed, he she'kol nesayonot ha'chayim ha ovrim al ish yehudi but indeed uh, all the tests of life that pass over an individual jew hare kulam behold all of them him they are here's rashi again there's our old friend lahanat khalatova for your benefit and for your reward she muvlim oto to uh, to, to carry him to get him to his uh, his life task. I'm looking at the clock. I'm not going to stop. I'm sorry. You got to hang on. And uh, they are all joined together. Sometimes they all come together. All the all the conditions, all those conditions, and the three things he's talking about refer to a famous Talmudic. Maimonides spends a lot of time on it. A discussion about uh, a person who was sexually and inappropriately promiscuous. Could you be appropriately permitted? I won't go there. So in in his or her youth, and now and made tshuva. And now in old age says, how come I've landed in this brothel? Or how come there's this, what, what, why, why is this? And he's saying uh, sometimes uh, the conditions of the 
the time and the place and the same woman are in front of me. And you want to say, what is this doing? And, and the slow number would say, dummy, it's a gift for you to realize that you're now beyond that. And that will only strengthen you. You cannot stop this guy. He, no matter what you say, he's going to say, it's part of your lifetime. And uh, the truth of the matter is, they have brought him to this situation for your benefit and for your reward. Uh, okay, I'll stop. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go a little farther because I, I would like to try to complete this. Lech lecha. Now we're, we're back to visiting the two lech lechas <clears throat> from the beginning. <clears throat> go forth for yourself, which is to say, when Abraham is told to leave his land, El Yehudcha, go on your mission, go on your life project. Im Yehudi ba'olam hazeh, im even, this is this blows me away. Even a Jew Baalam in this world, even if Lomed Umit Palel Osek Tovim, even if a Jew in this world learns, studies a lot of Torah, and prays regularly, and does good deeds, Hare Im Eno Metakeinet Yudo. Behold, if he doesn't fix his mission. If he doesn't complete his life mission, he doesn't worry about fixing his life task. That he is necessary for, we are re required to complete in your life. Then, when he ascends to the world on high, Sho'alim Oto, they ask him, Ma pa'alta ba'olam hazeh, and knew what did you do in this world? Yeah, I know you studied a lot of Torah, I know you prayed all the time, you did good deeds, but did you do the job? Did you do what you were supposed to do? It's almost heretical for him to say that. Perushu, its explanation is that Hare lo takanat et ha ikar. That its explanation is that behold, uh, he hadn't completed the, the main mission, the main idea. Etsha hayat tafkid That was his mission, his task, litakain, to repair. Sheze haya yehudcha ba'olam. That was his mission to repair her mission to complete in this world. So if you don't have enough to worry about now, you have to worry about when you die and you go to heaven and how you're going to try to persuade them that you really did complete your mission. Alayich, let's say, and it is upon you to go, from your land, your birthplace, the house of your family, which is to say, that mikol ha tanaim ha 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 all the conditions of hatchunot and the qualities of hatviot shelcha and your 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 natural characteristics, all your born with stuck with uh, situational stuff. The hine hashashem behold the root of shekol ha tchunot all the qualities and and the natural characteristics flow flow from this idea that you must complete your life task. That's why it's all been given to you. I'm up to page four. There are qualities that their root is, quote, from your land. He say, then he says, you know, kol eretz, every land, yeshetachunot haraot hashaychim, that for every land, there are bad qualities that sort of 
come with her. Uh, for example, murder, tzicha, v'gazel, theft, v'doma, and the like. In uh, in America, one of the bad qualities is learning how to walk by homeless people on the street. Sh'shar uh, shehem, that their their uh, root of those behaviors, mitzvah team spread al kol b'nei haaretz among all the people of that land. The yesh hashayachim mimolanetcha, and there's also things that depend on uh, on your birthplace. The heim hatchunot harayot, and they are bad qualities. She yesh b'chol mishpacha. <clears throat> it's not only the land you live in, he says, it also is the family you were raised in. They also have a truckload of Mishigas that you're schlepping around with you. And that the implication is I'm going to jump ahead because uh, what you have to leave also is uh, uh, your birthplace and the way they ate at the dinner table. You're going to have to leave that behind. Or their idea of fun that you've inherited and you now have. That's your, that has to be left also. You also have to leave the house of your father. Because the behavior in the holiness of the parents you draw out. What he's saying is left-handedly, he doesn't want to say that you have to leave uh, what your, who your parents were in honoring them, because he refers to it almost euphemistically, I think, in the holiness of the parents drawn out, come up, thus is all benehem on their children. And you got to leave a lot of that behind too. And he says, El Haaretz Asher Arecha to the land uh, which I will show you. Let Tikkun HaGamur to completely repair Shel Nishmatcha, your soul, Shehu Yehudcha Ba'olamcha, which is your mission in your world. <clears throat> Nesionot ke nesion ha'akeda, and tests like the test of the binding of Isaac, the akeda. She'amnam, which indeed, she'inem, behold, they are both and in one way, kashim pa'ame ach kashim harbe yoter. They're the hardest tests that anybody could ever have to uh, endure. She'az tsarich musar atzmo legamre that then one needs to transmit him herself completely below his ear, shum she ur latzmo, without leaving anything else left for yourself. There are some tests that, in, that come in life that are part of completing your life mission, which involve giving everything away, in this case, even your only son. Uh, Isaac, who you love, uh, and you can't have it, leave anything back for yourself. Bivchinat, in a sense, and now here's the next bumper sticker, what you have to say effectively is, Lecha ani ulchol asher li. I am yours and everything that I have. He may imply that that's the goal of life, that that's the ultimate expression of faith, that that would be your um, your mantra. I am yours, God, and everything that I have is yours. I'm at your service. <clears throat> Page five. Emar zot b'lashon halicha. Hey, he says, remember, each one of these are halicha. They are moving Moving along, Lech Lecha Me'ertzah has said to Abraham, uh, Od Kodem 
Shenicht Nasfarat Shisra, even before he made it to the land of Israel, he had to start moving along. The second statement when he was nine, and God says to Abraham, and go before me and behold, Nehemiah is said hello to him, after he's 99 years old, God is still bugging him about moving on. And go to the Go for yourself to the land of Maria. And it said to him, is said to him in the really old age. So, wow, he's got a different notion of the periods of life. But he says that the akeda, that giving everything away, uh, is said when he's already truly an old man. Then, so let me review this part. I have three stages of life. I've got Lech Lecha before you've entered the land of Israel. I've got middle age when I have to walk before Abraham and be whole. And then I've got the Akedah when I have to give everything away. He doesn't go into it. I think it may be one of the most potentially beautiful statements about the solutions to the binding of Isaac. He seems almost to be saying, it's only a metaphor. It's not so much as giving up your kid. It's giving up your everything. It's giving up everything you've wanted. It reminds me of uh, what my, uh, my, my mother-in-law, her memories of blessing, used to say, well, we would ever come to the house, she'd give us something. She'd say, I'd rather have the pleasure of seeing you have it than take it with me to the grave. She wanted to give away everything. And that may be the goal of life, the way he sees it. Keneged hat kufa havishana, and corresponding to the first stage of life, b'chaye adam in the life of a person, ka'asher who, uh, when he is but in youth, who mit gabrim bo and very powerful on him or her, kol haritzanot, all the desires vat shukot and the cravings vat avat and the the yearnings harut, bad stuff. When you're a young man, he says, you are usually overcome. Uh, by all of that stuff. I want this, I want that, I want to make this, I got to do that. Vatav Kido, uh, his mission as then is lehitna ar mikolze, to shake himself free from all this. For ze hama'avak, this hakasha, this difficult wrestling match, very difficult. This is the most difficult wrestling match in life, is being a young adult. And after uh, uh, th this, this period, there is the command, walk before me and behold. Each and every year of, of your life, God gives to, gives to a person, to rescue them in order that they could go uh, 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 ha, ha, onward Adonai, in the service of God and to stand and to stand uh, in uh, one place and walk before me and behold that he should go and go forward toward attaining shlemut or wholeness. <clears throat> okay, I'm almost done. And complete repair and fixing at Ha'inyan, the matter and Nisayon is the, the matter of the test of Lech Lecha Eretz where you offer your son. Shahu Nison HaKasheh 
biyoter. That's the hardest test of all. Shetzarich lemasor that he needs to transmit himself legamre completely. Kedel amod in order that he could stand, withstand, make all all these ages. Uh, quote v'hanisayonot and tests of chaye hachayim of life. Ma she Yehudi that a Jew must metakain be mechayav in the in the days of life. Va'al yadeze and according to this or thereby magia arrive letachlito to the purpose the yehudo and mission of his world. I have just two more paragraphs. Uvaze. <clears throat> Shone inyan haruchaneyut ma'aminim hagashmiim, and in this way, the matters of spirituality differ from matters of physicality or ordinary or secular stuff. Shein ma'aminim hagashmiim that if there is a, a, a physical opposite of spiritual. Af im eno holech shayech sheyamod al hamakom. That even if he doesn't go on, uh, but he stands in his place. He just stays where he is. Aval, but in yanim ha. Uh, let me let me do that again, because in uh, physical matters, if uh, uh, he just stands in his place, it's okay. He's finished it. Avalba in yanim haruchaniim, but in spiritual matters, ain't okay. And it's not that way. It's not like that. Tamid sarich a person always adam always leilech will hit kadev always needs to move along and press forward. The emo made by Macom, and if <laughs> she stays in the same place, hare ze gufa necheshav lo yerida, then it's not an accomplishment. You begin to descend. You begin to slide down. And let me connect a couple dots. I think it's also talking about Bethel, that uh, like you, I love with all my heart. And I think the most healing thing that can come from this is that Laurel's leaving is moving along to complete her life job. And it was also for years as a congregation to move along and to do the next thing and to try to achieve what you didn't think you could could ever achieve. And for God's sake, stop worrying about trying to get more members. If we knew how to get more members to a shul, we'd all know about it by now. There are, nobody knows how to do that other than being nice to people. Instead, God willing, you should all be selfish and do what your Rebbe says and just try to be great Jews. And if you really do that, People will wait in line to get in the door. And so it ends. And uh, so they are said, all these, uh, all these commandments are spoken in the, in the language of moving along. So that God could teach Avraham the paradigm Yid at Haderech Lechalal Yisrael, which would be the way for all Jews. That is always obligated and necessary to move along and press forward and to accomplish Yehud, the mission that by means of this they could uh, repair 
the repair of their souls, nishmatam, the yagi'u, and that they would attain tachlitam, their purpose, hagamor, completely, the olamam, in their worlds. Oh, I did it. I made it right in at the time. We have 15 minutes for questions. I'm yeah. exhausted. <laughs> I'm delighted to turn it over to the Rebbe, and I'll do my best to answer or respond to your comments. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm uh, advocating about uh, five or six questions that were tapped to me about the, I guess, sort of like the, the practicality of the idea of having one mission in life. There are questions saying, what happens if your mission is in your youth and not in your old age? Does that mean the rest of your life is uh, is wasted? And similarly, it sounds like the, the Rebbe was saying something a little, uh, as, as you were saying, daring. If we're trying to go about fulfilling mitzvot as a way of trying to figure out what our mission is, and the mitzvot are not actually what we're judged on after we die, what's the point of keeping the mitzvot? How do we just figure out what we're here to do? That's sort of an aggregate. Uh, of oh, I, no, that's fun. I, I, uh, the purpose of the mitzvot, I think I can answer intelligently. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, uh, they are not our mission in life. They are to help us keep our head clear and our, our path straight and to do what we needed to do to accomplish whatever our mission may be. And the young, young age, old age, um, I don't know. I mean, the delicious mystery of the whole thing is you, you, none of us will know exactly what our mission was. There are times, many times, thank God, when we hope that we might have a, a glimmer of what it is, and it's a rush and a charge, and we're um, enlivened by it. But only when it's finally all done do we get to look back and realize, oh, that's what it was. Now, look, I just turned 78. Um, and I look back now, and there were a bunch of things that I thought were my mission. And I realized, no, they were part of it. But the, the real mission is still unfolding. Um, so I think it's a mistake to read that part as uh, in the singular. It's just one mission. It's a it's a life path, and mm -hmm. you figure out how it unfolds. Best I can do. Beautiful, beautiful, Rabbi. We want to see your your smiling face. Could you uh, stop doing the screen share so we can see you now? Oh yeah, sure, of course, yeah. Go forth with the idea of integrating the disparate parts of ourselves. So the. the um, uh, he doesn't say you got to leave it. He says what you got to do is become aware of what it gave you and what you need to take with you and what you need to leave behind. Uh, everybody has got stuff they got from their native land, from their birthplace and from their parent and their family that they need to leave behind in order to accomplish their moving alongness on their life mission. And that that's some of the hardest stuff to do. So it's not you got to dump the whole thing. And some people, God bless them, part of their mission, part of their lech lechaing, part of their uh, moving along means they got to they got to move to Singapore. I know some beautiful people who have done that, and they would be a mess if they hadn't done it. Made their parents nuts, but that that's their life mission. And as soon as everybody figures that out. Everybody's a lot happening. Mm. My brother just moved to Bangkok, by the way. That was very close to home. Beautifully said. Rob, please. Can you, uh, and, and I'm asked for those who are, are speaking just to put your questions succinctly so we can get as many in here as we can. Rob Rosenberg, over to you, my friend. Thanks for letting me in. I appreciate it. And this is less of a question than a comment, which I wonder if it raises your comments in response. This sounds to me like a meditation on aging and dementia. Maybe that's because that's where I'm at. Um, but we experience aging and dementia as regressing, like going back to childhood. But in this teaching, uh -huh. moving forward is about giving yourself deeply away, everything that is deeply you, which seems like our experience of dementia. 
And I wonder whether we can do that with the gratefulness that this teaching suggests. Well, uh, <clears throat> I think what he would say, I'm not sure I like it, but I think what he would say is, no, the dementia too has been given to you to complete more of your life task, more of what you're here for. And I'm thinking of the transforming encounters that adults have had with their now dimensioned uh, parents and how transforming and healing it is for them. So uh, I don't think, uh, the only thing I think he would definitely not buy is the regressing part. I, I, I believe what he would say is no, that, that's moving along too. Remember, moving along doesn't mean cookies and ice cream and bluebirds. It means moving along. That we're talking, he says, we're not talking about collecting stuff, making stuff, being stuff, being strong. We're talking about moving along. And sometimes the moving along is sad. But it's holy. It's spiritual. It's transforming. And that's what I meant earlier when I, I'd love to talk more about this. We talk about how that, that's, that's called spiritual moving along and psychological moving along. Mm. Beautiful. Back to the sanctuary. What if no. you don't complete your task? Well, that's a mischievous question. That's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, no, yeah, I think, I think, I think uh, you're going to have a shitload of problems when you get to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> There's some, um, Joan, you want to, you want to have a rebuttal? You're, you're good with that. Rabbi, a couple of questions have, have uh, come through. I want to make sure that, uh, uh, that, that I understand what you're saying correctly, that the idea of a single task could be thought of as a single path, a single mode of being, a single way I, of life. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm glad a Rebbe of such depth is now leading the shul. That makes me feel a lot safer. Yeah, yeah, it's not a single thing. Oh, and what you've got to do is you've got to, in, <clears throat> I don't know, invent a, a safety, the safety pin, and that's your life. No, no, no. It, 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 but it is a single path. It is a single path. And I, uh, I think that's very, I think that's one of the wisest things, except for what the Slonomer said that's been said this morning. Good for you. Very nice. Yep. That, I'm giving it back to the Rebbe. Rosie. Hi there. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Larry. <laughs> Now I'm going to get personal. Have you completed your life task? And how do you know if you have? I mean, is your maybe you're a visual artist? First part of that question. Second part is who has who do you know of? Do you know anybody that's completed their task? No, you don't, no, you, you don't get to know. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Sometimes you get a glimmer, and I would say one of the sure tests that you haven't is that if you're convinced you have nice very nice, <laughs> very nice. Maybe that's my, for sure so this is going to be a brag uh so maybe my soul oh you know no no i stop I, I got i got an image of life as being on one of those little wheels in a hamster cage yeah yeah you just keep running that that's what you do well yeah. Rosie, I'm going to move us on to someone else here. Right. I'd like to request, I, and the, the chutzpidek rabbi of this community, wow. Has it changed at all since your day? <laughs> uh, I'm offer these words uh, from David Krieger. The Chidushe Harim talks about our unique mission a little differently. Rather than the mission of our lives, he says each of us has a unique mission in every moment, which actually seems like a neat parallel here. That it's about the process, the way that we're living. <clears throat> I find that a, a, a beautiful notion, but exhausting. <laughs> so new, now you get to kvetch about a karush <laughs> It reminds me of a teaching that my spiritual master, Arnold Jacob Wolf, 
uh, used to say, somebody once asked him, uh, you know, do you talk to God? He says, yeah, I talk all the time. He says, what do you say? Now what? <laughs> <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Okay. Very nice. Back to the sanctuary. Mark, nice and quick. Okay. Um, as part of the proof text, um, no evil comes from heaven. And, uh, mm -hmm. The question was, are you giving what you need to fulfill your 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 mission? Um, but we know that may not be true. Um, one of the views of evil that you taught the congregation decades ago <clears throat> was that, well, first of all, everything comes from God. Second of all, the evil might be like you eat food, it turns to excrement, you think the excrement is bad, the excrement fertilizes and creates more food. So maybe, uh, so evil does come from heaven, and maybe part of the evil is that you're not going to get your your what you need to complete your mission. So I have a problem with the proof text. Uh, what the main thing is that you got to do is not worry about why God gave you what God gave you. Is, be, is it good or bad, or is there evil or not? But what can you do to move along on your life path? What can you do to find God present in whatever is set before you? Hmm. Whether it seems like, look, <clears throat> I don't say now what to God. You, you know what, personally, what I say to God is, what were you thinking? <laughs> Why on earth would you? I I could have done better than that. What what reason? My 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 job is to get me to stop worrying about that and go back to the first phrase that I mentioned, which was emuna pshita, simple faith. Uh, I, I I I I don't I don't need to take more things apart and figure out if they're evil, not if they're evil. While I'm doing that to quote Buber, I could be stringing pearls for the delight of heaven. That's what I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm spending too much time thinking that I'm running things and that I don't like the way they're running or that I don't like the way God is running things to which I think the slaughter would say, shut up already and be a mensch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get moving already. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of people have, have texted me on a similar theme over the course of the, the morning. What responsibility do we have to help other people with their own process of moving on? Is it something that's <clears throat> isolation or is there a communal aspect too? You know, I'm, I'm so glad I was studying with Eddie just yesterday. We came across, uh, came across a passage in Shnei Luchot HaBrit, uh, which points out that when he says, you shall love the Lord your God, points out that the only way to love God is by loving your neighbor. And that the 10 utterances, I hadn't even realized this. I've taught them a bunch of times to people in these rooms, I, is that the, the 10 utterances at Sinai begin with I of God and end with your neighbor. I mean, it's straight Levinas. Hmm. The whole thing is... Uh, uh, you, you find God through how you treat other people. The way you love God is the way you love other people. Mm, beautiful. So in terms okay, come, of... Come on up. You can step forward. Oh. Just so the rabbi can hear. Hi there. Um, in terms of completing the task, whether you know it or not, I'm wondering if the task is not something to complete, but is more of a way, a process. Through the process, the way, I, the destination is not the, the query is the, the task is more of the process, that the way is everything, as opposed to the destination. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> uh, Michael. Beautiful. Michael, your hands up. You are up, my friend. Hey, hi. Yes, hi. Um, oh, oh, oh. Michael Appel. Oh, hi, Michael. Michael, you got Yeah, hi. 
Larry, it's you, wonderful you to got see skin. you. Thank you. You got skinnier. Oh, I, I don't know about that, but it's wonderful to see you, and all of this brings back many loving memories. Um, I remember me, many years ago, um, when I was going through a difficult time in my life, you told me that part of my task was to complete my father's work. And I've continued to wrestle with that. It, it's, it's, you know, it sets up a contradiction because I've also always resonated to Lech Lecha, you know, leave my father's house and, and try to find, figure out my own thing. And I, I'm sure I'm not the only man that you may have mentioned that to. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, you know, if you have any thoughts about that contradiction. Um, I'm older now, God, and I'm beginning to realize how wise you were to give me that guy as an agent of my coming into being. When I was younger, it drove me nuts. Yeah. But now that I get older, and I try to walk more on your path, I realize it was a very good thing. And uh, I'm now moving from running and hating and anger into forgiving and even loving. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Rabbi, I'm watching the time and I see we are at a quarter past. Do you want to give a, a final capstone on this, this beautiful, truly, truly beautiful morning? Um, um, I want to tell you all at Bethel how often I think about you and about how much I Love just about all of you. Not all of you, but just about all of you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I want to say that, um, as I uh, said to a friend uh, just the other day, talking about preparation for this, that um, I believe we all have manila folders that include pages for the things that we've done that we like, things that we've done that we're ashamed of, things that we've done that are very important. And we order the pages in the folders. So the stuff we're ashamed of, that goes at the bottom. And as the stuff hopefully gets better and better, there's a lot of pages in the top because we expect that when we die, we're going to have to hand that folder to somebody up there and they're going to open the folder. And I think um, one of the very top pages on my folder, when I die, is going to say, well, don't forget God. I had something to do with getting Laurel to lead congregations in song. <laughs>